Stories of change, which usually make headlines, are the ones characterized by violence, force, or the play of powers, where one side loses and the other side wins. However, there's a different kind of change, defined by love, kindness, and sacrifice, which gives life, hope, peace, and fulfillment. These are the stories of change we're happy to share, and their heroes we enjoy celebrating. Welcome to Season 2 of MTN Heroes of Change, a program which will restore your faith in humanity and inspire you to be a better person. This program is brought to you by MTN Ghana Foundation. MTN Mobile Money. It's easy, fast, and super convenient. Experience the new world of better money. You're watching MTN Heroes of Change. For the next 13 weeks, we'll be putting the spotlight on 10 amazing individuals who are bringing real change into their communities. They are many things to many people, but to us, they are heroes. From Karaga to Jamestown, Begro to Apam, our heroes are making their presence felt through their initiatives and projects which address fundamental challenges in the areas of economic empowerment, health and education. At the end of the 13 weeks, one of our heroes would walk away with 100,000 CDs in support of his or her project. This season, you, our cherished audience, will get to be part of selecting who wins this season's MTN Heroes of Change. Your votes could determine who gets to walk away with 100,000 Ghana CDs. However, let's rewind the clock a year ago when plastic surgeon Dr. Kwame Abrokwa was adjudged the overall winner of the very first MTN Heroes of Change. It was for his outstanding work in bringing free medical care to the impoverished people in rural areas through his Graft Foundation. Dr. Kwame Abrokwa Yankira, your selfless acts of leadership and heroism, your demonstration of kindly spirits that MTN recognize you as our first ultimate hero of change. My name is Dr. Kwame Abrokwa Yantra, a plastic surgeon since 2008. And I'm the founder of the Plastic Surgery Unit at 37 Military Hospital. Before me, there had been no plastic surgeon there, so I started from scratch. In Ghana, there are only eight plastic surgeons, of which I'm one of them. Considering our population of 25 million, as at the last uh, census, it means one surgeon served more than three million people. And these eight of us are limited to only Kumasi and Accra, and yes, three hospitals. But the majority of Ghanaians are in the rural areas. And these people don't even know there is help for them if they have a problem that is corrected by plastic surgery. So Graph Foundation was formed so that we can reach out to people in these rural areas. Now, some of the problems they have are more or less very simple things that need correction, maybe 30 to 45 minutes surgery that can change their entire life. Bringing hope and smiles to people's faces actually has been the motivation that keeps us going, irrespective of the odds.
ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kwame Abrokwa Yechua is our MTN Hero of Change for the year 2013. And there he is. I would like to thank the MTN Foundation, the Chief Executive of MTN Company. Thank you very much. And well, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kwame Abrokwa Yechua becomes the very first Hero of Change. Welcome back to MTN Heroes of Change. A few years ago, it was quite normal to walk past the neonatal intensive care unit of the Tamale Teaching Hospital without a second look. It was a dreaded place which gave mothers and their newly born babies sleepless nights. Through the initiative of the MTN Ghana Foundation, a whole lot has changed. Wherever you go in Ghana, there's an MTN Foundation project making a difference in the lives of the people. Here is one such story. Push, push, no. Push, 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 I'm Jennifer Falasan. I'm, I'm from Borga. I teach at Tamale Girls in Year High School. I started having abdominal pains then. We came to the hospital pretty late at night. I was dilating. They realized that they had to just induce me so that the baby would just come out and I'll be free. It's now we small. Push. The baby is big. He was actually six months, two weeks. So they didn't really have any chance of survival for him. Why the rest? <laughs> Sylvia Fafali Ajite. I'm a general nurse here in Tamale Teaching Hospital. I started working in this ward in 2012 and we're actually working in a small cubicle. I wouldn't call that one a ward because it was just a very small place and we're doing everything there. Sometimes you can have like 20 babies on admission in a day and then the room was so small and so stuffy. It was situated in the ONG unit. It was just one cubicle that we divide a very small, very hot, congested. At a point, I, we couldn't even get breast milk for him. They were not allowed to be there. You just express, go out, and the nurses will do their job. The babies cry. I mean, the death rate was high. My name is Dr. Alassan Abdelmoumin, a pediatrician specialist, and the doctor in charge of the newborn intensive care unit, Tamale Teaching Hospital. The newborn intensive care unit in Tamale Teaching Hospital is the main referral center for all sick newborns, whether they are big and they are sick or they are small and sick at the same time. We were working in a one cubicle unit and there was a time that even a rat had bitten off the ear of one of our babies and it really became a very serious news that almost all the radio stations in Tamale had taken up and covered for a number of days. It was in 2012. The hospital's management actually wrote this proposal where they were looking for public-private partnership to help build the newborn intensive care unit, I mean, to go in line with the hospital mandate of providing quality tertiary care to babies and mothers. So that was when the MTN Foundation Ghana responded to the call of the hospital. I'm Esther Dodu, the nurse manager for Ops and Gynec, Tamale Teaching Hospital. This is the maternity unit where we take care of pregnant women to delivery and up to 40 days after delivery. In the delivery, when the baby's weight is below 2.5, which is the normal. The babies are sent to the neonatal intensive care unit for monitoring. My name is Habiba Lama, PNO, deputy in charge of the NICU ward. This facility is a 
neonatal intensive care unit. Before MTN's intervention, there are days we come to work and we are sweating. Because you have about 10 staff, you have about 40 babies. There are times that nurses collapse, doctors collapse. If one baby had an infection, then you touch the baby and you don't wash your hands. You move to the other baby, you are causing cross-contamination of the baby. So the babies would die. No place for the mothers to sleep. So you, you realize that when they admit you, most of the mothers are always found around. So wherever that you find good for you to sleep, then you would sleep. At first they didn't have hope for me, but we kept on praying. Then coupled with the conditions that he was always on oxygen. Sometimes they will run out of oxygen. Even if we have oxygen for them, to manage the babies, we leave some outside. It is when it finishes that you get that space and put another one in. I'd like to say a very big thank you to MTN. We have a big place, a nice place. We are comfortable, our babies are comfortable. You have at least two incubator rooms. If like I had given birth at the time that this facility was there, maybe the kind of suffering we went through have gone through it. When you don't have a monitor, you just come to serve medication and then you, are, you realize that the baby is not really breathing. So these monitors that came with the uh, building of this facility, you can be alerted if you are far away and something is happening to the baby. The monitor makes noise, saying that you can detect their problems early enough. The facility is big, it's huge. They have space for mothers and the babies. So MTA has really done well for them. So much has changed. Last year, for the first eight months of the year, we, our mortality rate stood around 15.7%. Now we are talking about 12.5% mortality. So that is a 3% reduction in newborn care mortality. We really are grateful to MTN Foundation for completing this uh, edifice and then handing it over to us to use to serve our patients in this part of the uh, country. We are grateful to MTN. We always appreciate you. Since its establishment in 2007, the MTN Ghana Foundation has led the way in corporate social investments in Ghana by impacting the lives of over 3 million people in the areas of education, health and economic empowerment across the country. The MTN Ghana Foundation has spent over 21 million Ghana cities on various social development initiatives, brightening lives and making a difference. first story in the series. It takes place in Karaga in the northern region at a time when the community is struggling with the issue of malnutrition in children. Nayina Karim's journey begins on the sidelines as a licensed chemical seller offering medication to the dying children. We follow him as he offers himself on the front line as a father. My name is Dr. Anthony Inso Akunzule, a veterinarian. I got to know Karimo when an email from uh, some friends from UK said they wanted to visit uh, Karimo Nayina on a poultry project. But because I do a lot of poultry work, they decided to go with me to visit Karimo so that we design a poultry project to help him in his uh, community center, which is a nutritional center, because we wanted to use eggs as an entry point to improve the nutrition of the children at uh, his nutritional center at Karaka. 
Karimu stands out uniquely among other people because he is living in a very remote area of the country, Karaka. And he started this all by himself, under a tree, without support from anybody. And he has been doing this for the last 10 years. When I visited the center, I was moved because I'm from the north. And I couldn't believe how children were so skeleton because just not feeding the right of a food. And I've seen that because of that, he has a moringa farm that he harvests the moringa and then use the moringa as a food supplement. We encourage him to have a poultry farm. Apart from rehabilitating him to be well nourished, he has opened a school to educate these children to become people, future leaders of what? Ghana. And the number of children that have passed through his center, that really made me to be moved. And that is why I have decided to nominate Karimo Nagina for the MTN Heroes Award. what we call marasmi kosheko. Some people may think that the child is albino, not at all. Because the skin that can protect to make the child warm is not there. That is why we have set on this fire. If this fire is off for two hours, this child will die. The thing that prompted me to start this project is I came here as Lance's chemical seller, and I realized that the children were dying. There was this sub health committee in Karga here. I talked to the secretary, the chairman, and we all moved to the chief, and I talked to him that there were too much malnutrition cases. And they say yes. Uh, they feel that uh, those children are not children. They are spiritual children. They are ghosts. There was a man closer in a community called Ga and Tong. So they were sending those children there to be killed. So I told them that no, they are not spiritual children. It is nutritional insecurity. So they need to be rehabilitated. The child was walking, at the time the child was walking, that was the very time that the sickness attacked him. And they were going around looking for treatment, and they didn't get. To the extent that they even lost hope that the child would survive again. Yana is the overall of Japan, and after Yana, he's the next. Court or not, what can I tell you? Any child who was under my notice, we used to send them to um, Nalirigu. So once Mr. Kari paid him the ticket service, and they told him that if he could have helped him to get a convenient place so that he would deal with the children, because sending them to Nalirigu also worsened the situation. Mm -hmm. Because in the rainy season like this, it's very difficult for us to get chance to live. It is not easy. Uh, Modo Emoro Ata, a prescriber, Karga District Hospital. Most of the time we get cases here that we initially when I came, I didn't know where to refer them to. I did my own investigation and realized that there is no rehabilitation center around. He is the one only supporting the community encouraged me to be referring cases to his outfit there. Yeah, but Mr. Kalim. Mr. Kalim saw the child. He insisted that they should bring the child to him. But the parents refused. They said no. But Mr. Kalim still insisted up to the point that he went to the police and then asked them to support him to bring the child to him. So when they brought the child, in fact, they realized that 
The way the child was, in some few months, they have seen some great changes. Bishop, 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 but for some weeks or for some months, when you go back and see the child, they fall into marble. If I turn the child back, you will see that this is part of the skin that is still there. It is because the child has come here. That is why this part has remained. Otherwise, it will keep on killing and the child will die. The challenges are uncountable. As of now, this project is not sustainable. If I die today, Animals will use this facility. It is not sustained. It is an individual initiative. I had the passion to run it. This child ID, we have to put the child on F75 to F100. Then we now go to local feeding. And they are supposed to buy dry skim milk. They can't afford. We are harvesting our vegetables and moringa from this garden. We have Moringa, we have Okru, we have Bra, Alefu, Belga, Ayoyo. So we get them from here daily. We get not less than two and a half tons of maize every year. We dry the Moringa in a very good temperature and then grind it into Moringa powder. We use them in feeding the children, both those on admission and in the school. At the moment, she's very, very happy. And she doesn't even know how to express her excitement again. The official establishment of this project is 11 years. I have treated 1,443 severely minorized children. As a chief of this town, he will stand on behalf of all those who have benefited from Mr. Karim's work to say, may God bless him and may God strengthen him to continue to do this work and this. My name is Naina Karim and my project is Dizembela Nutrition Rehabilitation Center. We provide treatment and care for minorities children in Karga and surrounding communities. Naina Kari continues to bring hope and smiles to the faces of the children in the Karaga community. Great job, Mr. Kari. We celebrate you a true hero of change. If you believe Naina Karim deserves to be the overall winner of the MTN Heroes of Change, text Naina to the short code displayed on your screen. Life is better with MTN Mobile Money. It's easy, fast, and super convenient. Experience the new world of better money. This is just the beginning of our journey. Join us next week as we meet another hero, Yvonne Guedua, 
a physically challenged fashion designer from Begro in the Eastern region. She's teaching others why living off sympathy is to cheapen yourself. Till then, stay tuned to MTN Heroes of Change, proudly brought to you by MTN Ghana Foundation and MTN, Ghana's largest telecommunications network. Thanks for watching.